So tonight we're looking at something that is found in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Written to the nation of Israel under the law. And written to the Christian under grace. And yet, Israel did not follow it. And yet, many Christians do not follow it. Our first place would be under the law in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 17. Israel is about to go into the land. Deuteronomy is the law for the Jews that have survived the 40 years in the wilderness. And they're about to go into the land. And this book of Deuteronomy is, along with all the book of Moses, but Deuteronomy is for those that are going into the promised land. And Moses, by God, writes, Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. This is a law, but he shall not multiply horses to himself. Solomon broke that. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that they should multiply horses. Solomon broke that. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall not henceforth return no more that way. God told Israel, Do not return <coughs> me, back to Egypt. Now, Egypt is a type of the world in the Bible. The land in the ways of Egypt represents the world. And the Jew, the Hebrew, the Israelite, the ones from Judah were told in the law, do not go back to Egypt. And they failed. And they got in trouble. King Solomon had them go back for, you know, for horses, for gold. In the book of Jeremiah, which we're going to run next, Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah they have been conquered, Israel. The city's destructed. And many of the Hebrews, the Israelites, while Babylon came, and after Babylon came, ran to Egypt. Matter of fact, there's, there's one episode where they stole away Jeremiah. And Barak and stole them into Egypt. And running back to the law, we just read in Deuteronomy, you're not to go back to Egypt. Egypt was a place for the Hebrews, a place of bondage, a place of, of cruel treatments, a place where they were killing their babies. And you were not to go back. You have no business in Egypt. The land of Israel is self efficient for the Hebrews to live. There was no reason to go back into the world, into Egypt, but they did. So we read in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 45, My people, that's Israel, now get that, my people, Israel, there's no church. There are no Christians in Jeremiah. My people, Israel, Hebrew, Jews, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my people, go ye out of the midst of her. So here God saying, verse 44, it's Babylon. Get out. Do you realize in the church age today, we have many of the Babylonian gods in worship? The church worships Easter, which is actually Esther. I don't care what the fact checkers say on Facebook. 
you know, the Roman Catholics that write into the fact check, they don't know nothing. Meanwhile, the church celebrates that star, the eggs, the fraternity, all in the name of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ, the saints are going to find at fault. I don't care what your pastors say. I don't care what the institutes say. I don't care what the colleges say. I don't care what the seminaries say. I care what history says. History says Easter comes from that one. And the church is involved in it. I've only found one church of all the churches I've been in that doesn't follow that stuff. And then you got another one, Christmas, Tammuz. Christians don't even know who Tammuz is, and you find him in Jeremiah. And the, the Christmas tree in Jeremiah chapter 10, which I was in the Baptist church, they had a little Christmas tree on the piano, and we went from Jer Jeremiah 9 to Jeremiah 11, because we can't go against the Christmas tree on the piano. And I've had pastors, well, you know, uh, blah, 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 you know. Hey, listen, don't give the plea to me. Get down on your knees and repent, or you're going to stand before Jesus Christ and give an account. And you got Sunday service. That shows up in the book, the book of Jeremiah as an abomination. See, the problem with the church today is they don't know history. They don't know church history. They don't know Old Testament history. And so, they don't know what to come out while they're in. And we have seen two places in the Bible written to Jews, Hebrews, Israelis. Come on out. Get out. Get out of Egypt, the type of world. Get out of Babylon, uh, the gods. We are infiltrated with the Babylonian gods. That goes all the way back to Babel. God says, get out. Well, Israel's going to fall into them again. Go all the way back to Nimrod and Tamu. Where the church is today. A set point of the church is where Israel is at the close of Jeremiah and the Lamentation. A lot of the seeing church age is not going to have much to rejoice when Jesus comes. Not at the judgment seat of Christ. And God said, Get out! Let's jump ahead to Revelation. Remember what I said. Revelation, there are no Christians in the book of Revelation. I don't care if they, when they get saved in the tribulation, they're not Christians. My jury of them, the, 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 the tribulation is written to Israel, Jacob's trouble. The only means I see of salvation for the for the, the Gentiles is their relationship and how they treat the Jew. But we have something in the New Testament, yet in the future for the Jew. Chapter 18, verse 4. Look at verse 2. He cried mine with a strong voice saying, Babylon. Where is that Babylon? Babylon has been from the beginning of Genesis chapter 10 with Nimrod all the way up to chapter 18 in the book of Revelation in the tribulation period. Again, God says, 18, 4. I heard another voice from heaven, okay? From heaven, come out of her, my people, the 
the Jews. Not the church. The church is already gone. Not Christians. There are none. My people in the Old Testament, in the law, in Jeremiah, my people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, Jewish, Hebrews. I don't care if you pretend to be Jews. I don't care if you pretend to be the 144,000. If you are not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're not Jewish. Now, if your family line is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're God's people. God is never, will never, ever be finished with the nation of Israel. And he addresses his people that you be part, not partakers of her sins. You or they are not to partake of their sins. It's amazing from what I know, the Christians I know, who will go to church, go to church, go to church, don't miss church, and yet when it comes to a family reunion, when it comes to a cruise, they're the first ones not to be in church. And their families today are broken up. They're involved in things they shouldn't be involved in. They're doing things they shouldn't be doing. See, a little leaven leavens a whole lot. You know, when I first went to high school, I'm at the bus stop. I asked a sophomore for my very first cigarette. I'm just trying to figure out what year that was. I don't remember. The 80s. In 2023, a little leather, a little cigarette, I asked for it. I got emphysema and COPD. And right now, I'm on three liters of oxygen every day, every hour. I didn't see that. For me, I see my grandpa, and not me. God told me many times, get out of that cigarette. I can't say, God, I got up to see like a COPD because of you. It ain't God's fault. It ain't the devil's fault. I didn't come out. I stepped in to be cool. That's what church is. We are all welcome to your play partners. We're going to go out there and win the world with the world tactics. You can't do that. That's not God's way. Oh, we're not going to preach the gospel. We're going to show a movie. We're going to get everybody's eyes off the gospel. And we're going to tell them about the, you know, the tribulation period. We're going to have movie night. We're going to have first Friday scenes. We're going to have everything but the gospel of Jesus Christ in the worldly ways. There are churches out there that have concerts. There are churches out there that have alcohol. There are churches out there that have uh, parties. There are churches out there that do the things of the world. To gain the world. God says, come out. There are Christians out there. Second Corinthians. Chapter 6. Verse 14. Now this is written in the church age. This is Paul right into the church. Six fourteen. 
but ye be ye Christians, ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I know that means marriage. Also your fellowship, your parties, your office party, your Christmas party. <clears throat> How about your Baptist fellowship? Invite your family out, invite everybody out. That's, Paul says no. So majority of the churches today, Baptist churches, you got more unbelievers in the church than you do believers. And many of them think all kinds of means that when they die, they'll go to heaven, but in reality, when they die, they'll go to hell. Unbelievers. Yeah, we're to witness to them. Yeah, we're to have good conduct with them. Paul says, draw the line. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship, that's a Baptist word, with the righteous and the unrighteous? Are there righteous at your church fellowship? Okay, fine, great, glory to God. Are there unrighteous at your Baptist fellowship? And you know, some pastors, some Sunday school teachers, some people are going to get up and say, well, that's not what that means. That is black and white, everyday English of the King James 1611 Bible. Don't give me any other version. I'll throw it in the garbage. Okay? There's a fellowship with the righteous and there's a fellowship with the unrighteous, which Paul says, no. What communion, oh, we know what a communion, has light and darkness. It's absolutely wrong, but there are churches out there, Baptist churches, that the darkness, John 3, the wicked, the unsaved, darkness, partake of the Lord's Supper at a Baptist church. And Paul warns of sickness. Paul warns of disease. Paul warns of death. You take that Lord's Supper with no heed. What concord has Christ Jesus with Belia, a wicked fellow, a wicked person? What part has he that believeth the Christian with an infidel, a non-believer? The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The church today is attended by many fools. And even Antichrist. Now remember, the church is not the building. The church is your body as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. You are saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone without any works, without any church official, without anything, without anyone but Jesus Christ. Your body is the temple. Not the building. There are many Christians out there. That church is the temple. That church is, you know, manicure rooms and, and the nice seats and everything just right. And most of the congregation going to hell. And some of the, the saved congregation are, are shut ins. They, they don't get no visit in the hospitals. They're just left off. While the 99 are getting entertained. And meanwhile, they're going out and rescue the perishing. But they ain't helping the disease. The sick. The wounded. The wayward. 
What agreement has the temple of God, your body, with idols? Now again, I've seen Baptist churches with Christmas trees. I've seen Baptist churches with Easter eggs and bunny decorations. I've seen Baptist churches, you know, they got up the, uh, the picture on the wall of the face of the person who started this church, who built this church. And I've seen, uh, you know, with names and everything. All honor to the builder. All honor to the founder. And forget about Jesus Christ. Yes, Baptist churches. As God has said, I will dwell in them. The Holy Spirit dwells me. Inside me is the Holy Spirit. And walk in them. Well, when you go to the bar, you're taking God to be saved. You have no business to be in a bar. Imagine a Christian man going to a topless bar and he's got the Holy Spirit in him. Wow! How about that moment you're, you're, you're smoking whatever you're smoking and you take that inhale and you blow it out and the rapture happens. You blow smoke in Jesus' face. What about that? I will be their God and they shall be my people. Run that reference back to Deuteronomy and run it back to Jeremiah. Run it back to Revelation that my people is Israel. That my people, Corinthians, is the church. Israel is God's people and we Christians are God's people. So scripture is scripture. You run the Old Testament with the New Testament Get out! Wherefore come out from among them and be separate. A division. There is to be a division among Christians and unbelievers. And if you're not, you got other ideas. What's that verse say? And I don't correct it with the Greek. And I don't go run to uh, the commentaries. It's plain and simple, black and white and English that I can understand. The word separate means division. You will find division from Genesis chapter 1 and on. There's even a division in the tribulation period. Those that have the mark and those that don't have the mark. There's a division at the, at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Those that helped Israel and those that didn't help Israel. And touch not the unclean thing. Are you touching things you should not be touching? That unclean is a word that's found in the law. Now, we are not under the law, but there are some things in the law it's okay to follow. Not for salvation, but for your Christian work. Work. Perfect one. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's under the law. Yeah, that's also in the written to Christians. Romans. I will receive you. So what happens if you do touch an unclean thing? What if you are not separate? What if you don't have a division? What, what if you are involved in idols? What if you are on the side of Belia? What if you are a part of infidel? What if that is your fellowship? What if that is your people? Then God can't say, I will receive you. That's interesting. I will be a father, capital F, unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. That's one place in the New Testament. Daughters. Very infrequent. Are the women that are saved daughters. Mentioned as daughters. Even the women. And the men that are saved. If you do or try to do right. 
God will receive you. He will be your father. And you shall be his son or his daughter. Saith the Lord Almighty. That Almighty runs back to you. Jehovah, Lord God Almighty in the Old Testament. There is a strong rebuke. Where are you to walk? Where are you to go? And who you are to be with? I know you got to work with them. But where is the line? Where does it displease? 